Alrighty, let's go through the answer key to the impulse momentum theorem worksheet. First question, we're using the graph of the force versus time of the ball hitting the racket. Uh, first one is just how long is the racket in contact with the ball, so that's our time frame, 0.3 seconds. Is the force on the ball constant? No. Nope. Starts out at zero, goes up to a maximum of six, and then drops back down to zero, so no. Nope. Maximum force is up here at six newtons. What happens at 0.15 seconds? 0.15 seconds is halfway through the hit. So this is when the ball uh, in the first half of the hit is kind of going into the racket, bending the strings back. And the second half is when the ball is starting to rebound away from the racket. It's still touching, but it's just being pushed away from the, the, the webbing, the strings of the racket. It hasn't left touching it, but it's rebounding away. It starts... Uh, letter E, the impulse on the ball. So impulse is, uh, when you have a graph, is the area of a force time graph, so between the line and the x-axis. So we've got a triangle here, so I can just do one half base times height. Half the base is 0.3 seconds and the height is 6 newtons. So 1 half base times height is 0.9 newton seconds. F, if the ball is 0.2 kilograms and not moving horizontally before being hit, how fast would it be moving after getting hit? So the hit, the impulse on the ball from the hit, is going to equal the change in momentum of the ball. So we already found the impulse in the last question. It was 0.9. Change in momentum is m delta v. So 0.9 equals the mass. Final velocity minus initial velocity, which we're told is 0 because it was not moving before being hit. So divide by 0.2, and you get a final velocity of 4.5. Last part is, if the ball was hit horizontally from a height of one and a half meters above the ground, how far away will it land? So, terrible drawing of the tennis rackets. Over here, hits the ball. We know the ball moves to the right at four and a half meters per second. from a height of one and a half meters. We want to know the range, delta x. So this is just a projectile motion problem uh, to get delta x. Oops. We need to know two things, the x velocity, which is four and a half, and the time in the air. So 4.5 times whatever t ends up being, that's what we're going to do to find delta x. To get t, since it's a horizontal projectile, we're going to have to use the kinematic equations, particularly delta y equals v i y times t plus one half a t squared. It's going to fall one and a half meters. Initial y velocity is zero because it's hit horizontally only. Plus one half negative nine point eight because it's falling down times t squared. Solve for t. You get point five five three seconds. Plug that in here, and we get a range of 2.4 millimeters. Next ones, we've got a one kilogram object that's moving to the right at one meter per second, and we want to know how fast it's going after these particular impulses. So the things moving to the right at one meter per second, and then it gets pushed around by these forces for a certain amount of time, and we want to know what it's doing after these forces. So for the first graph, the impulse, which is just the area, would be 1 times 2, so 2. Here it's 2 by 4, which is 8 cut in half because it's a triangle, so that would be 4. Over here, 0. 0.5 times negative 4 is a negative 2. The area here, 2 by 2 divided by 2 is positive 2. 
And the other triangle down below, 2 by negative 2. Cut that in half to get negative 2 for, your, for all of your impulses. So in the first graph, if we're doing impulse equals change in momentum for all of these, we've got 2 equals your mass, which is 1, times your change in velocity, final minus 1, because we told that's the initial velocity. So your final velocity is 3 meters per second, and that would still be to the right. Because it came out positive. Next one, impulse equals change of momentum, so 4 equals mass of 1, final velocity minus initial velocity, solve for vf, and you get 5 meters per second. Also to the right. Next one, pulse equals change in momentum, so negative 2 equals 1 times Vf minus Vn. Solve for Vf, negative 1 meter per second, so or in other words, 1 meter per second to the left. And then your impulse for the last one is 0. is the same as it was at the beginning. Real life examples of safety equipment that utilize impulse momentum theorem. So this is where we're talking about Ft equals m delta v. So we want the time period to get really big so the force goes down. This is an average force. So helmets, slow your head down over a longer period of time shoulder pads, shin guards in soccer, bending your knees when you jump up and down, um, crumple zones in the front of cars are designed to slow a car down over a longer time, seat belts are designed to stretch so that your body comes to a rest over a longer period of time, airbags, padded dashboards, gloves on a boxer's hands, all these things um, cause these impulses to have a longer time period so the average force is less. Right, last one, uh, airbags can save your life, assuming your mass is 80 kilograms, uh, you've got a speed limit of 30 miles per hour, and you're driving this fast, and your car hits a patch of ice, you slide off the road and hit a brick wall. If the airbag deploys, your body comes to rest in 0.08 seconds after the collision. If it doesn't deploy, your body comes to rest in 0.01 seconds, because you just hit the steering wheel and stop immediately. So we need to, A, uh, and number 8, find the average force on your body during the collision with and without the airbag. So 30 miles per hour. Hour, we have to change that into meters per second. So I looked up a conversion there's 1.6 kilometers in a mile, and in one kilometer there's 8,000 meters, and in one hour there's 3,600 seconds. So 30 miles per hour is 13.3 meters per second. So with an airbag, let's do that first. Ft equals m delta v. So F times 0.08 equals your mass 80, final velocity 0, minus your initial velocity of 13.3. Gives you an average force on your body of 13,333. If you're wondering where the negative sign goes, it's just the force from the wall is in the opposite direction you're driving. If you want to keep the negative sign there, that's fine. Uh, without the airbag, air, uh, time is 0.1 seconds, 80. You still come to rest. Uh, so final velocity is 0, and your initial velocity is still 13.3. That gives you an average force 8 times larger, so 106,400. Significantly more force on the body. Now we're actually at the last problem. An 18,000 kilogram train is moving at 15 meters per second when the engineer applies the brakes. If the braking force is a constant 3.5 times 10 to the fourth, or 35,000 newtons, how long does it take the train to stop? So 
So the force is 3.5 times 10 to the fourth. It's going to be the opposite direction of the train's motion because it's brakes. T is what we want. Mass is 18,000 kilograms. Final velocity is zero because it's coming to a stop. Its initial velocity is 15. Distribute the 18,000, divide by 3.5 times 10 to the fourth, and we get 7.7 .7 